and um, just uh, the background judge uh, first of all Miss Cherry uh, believes that she's innocent of the charges this woman was not a witness in a DNN case but um, she was uh, friends with teachers at a school where there was some mandatory reporting um, that resulted in a DNN case uh, that resulted in Miss Cherry's ex-husband getting custody of her children. This was very upsetting to her um, because in 2002 in Weld County case 02DR652 um, she was awarded custody of her children. Um, I've looked at some transcripts from some of those hearings. Uh, it was drawn out until 2005 but she was awarded custody. Um, some child psychologists presented evidence at the hearing suggesting that her ex-husband had molested the children. Uh, they were child psychologists that uh, had expertise in child play therapy and they believe that some disclosures had been made by the children during some of this therapy. So it was very frustrating for Miss Cherry um, when in a 2006 JV 237 a DNN case was opened as a result of one of her children having a broken arm and um, at this point she did not have money for an attorney and uh, um, her husband uh, ex-husband got involved in that case and ended up getting custody awarded back to her she attempted uh, excuse me back to him I apologize Her husband, uh, ex-husband, got involved in that case and ended up getting custody awarded back to her. She attempted, uh, excuse me, back to him, I apologize. And um, it was frustrating for her because she tried to reintroduce the evidence of the sexual abuse and um, I looked the case up online and she was denied to make references to that evidence. She didn't have the money uh, to, to call experts or have counsel. And uh, she felt that uh, all the teachers um, and the principal thought that she was making those allegations up. and thus uh, her animosity uh, towards the teachers at that school. Uh, 
Uh, on top of that, there was another Weld County case where she was charged with felony criminal libel. Because after losing her children, she picketed the school. And um, with, with a permit, she was charged with the felony, but uh, it was subsequently dismissed by the Will County District Attorney's Office. Um, and I believe it might have even been a no file, but there were some police reports um, involving that that made it into discovery in this case. But. Um, Losing her children was the most painful thing that ever happened to her. And um, because she is uh, in a lot of pain because of what happened and she believes she was treated very unfairly uh, in losing her children. Um, thank you very much. You went to a swingers party? Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have the pictures anymore. Why? Because I didn't meet them anymore. My case got moved out of Larimer County. And I didn't need the pictures anymore. His boss had... There was nothing more he could do with my case. It was out of his hands at that point. How do you get invited to a swingers party like that? I was on a site called Adult Friend Finders, and they had these big parties. There was a group on there that had a bunch of big, they would have parties like four times a year in this hotel. I had to be a member of this group, and then, yeah. Okay, so where was the party held? That one was at the, over by the old Stapleton. Red Lion? Yeah, it's a Red Lion now. Okay, and when was that? That was in 2007, because Mike Sherodis was still in my case. And Mike who? It was one of my many lawyers. Yeah, and she was doing some shady shit in that courthouse at that time. Is it in some court documents? I mean, what did you end up doing with those photographs? No, what I did, because I had to go to court, before Josh dad, we were fighting to get the kids from my ex. And when I saw Josh dad at the party, he looked at me because I'd been in his courthouse many, many times. Just shook his head like, stay away from me. Don't talk to me. And when we were sitting in court, I had the pictures in my hand. I kind of looked him up where he could see him and nobody else could. Black people him into giving me back my kids. And it worked? Um, what actually ended up happening was Adams County ended up opening up a CNN. So that's why it got all moved down to, to Adams County. There was a big fight between him and Chapansky over my case as to who was going to hold it. And then it got moved down to Adams County, so it all became a moot point. And I fought in Adams County for years. I fought in Adams County. Before that or after? After that. And then it got moved to El Paso County, where I finally won and got my kids back. So you saw Joss Dad and his wife, Magistrate Dinsmore Tuttle, at a swingers party at the... Now, now is what it is. It used to be the Holiday Inn over at 
Stapleton. I think it's the Red Lion is what it is now. Who owns it now? In 2007. Yep. How did you get into that group? Was it difficult? Well, I was on Bill Friend Finder, which is a lot worse than, than what it really was. And there's this chat room and stuff. And I used to hang out in the chat room, and everybody kept wanting me to come to one of their parties, so I went. The police are so corrupt here, I can't go to the police with this. I've actually been referred by the police to the FBI. You can go to the FBI. Here's the problem with the FBI. Is it really going to do anything? Because they don't really care. Yeah. I went down that road. I went down that road. I talked to the FBI. They, you know, they just don't care. Yeah, I've had multiple conversations because there was a separate investigation unit that was opened for Colorado Family Courts, the corruption in the Colorado Family Courts by the FBI. When was this? 2006. Officer Bretches, who framed me with these teachers that took my kids. The the guy, his biological family, uh, one of his brothers and his and that brother's wife were public school teachers in a high school for twenty five years in California. That's how they're getting away with all of this. My children went to school one day and never came home again. Is that the three that just got busted not too long ago? I don't know. Just tell me about it. There were some teachers, this guy, a man and his wife, and there was one of the sisters. They were all public school teachers and they just got busted in a child's sex ring. So you're kind of contacting me and seeing what I can do to kind of organize you and how to facilitate the story or how to approach it. Would that be correct? I think you're probably the best qualified person that I can find right now for that purpose, yes. Okay. First of all, I'm so sorry for what's happened to you. You know, obviously I used to post on your site a lot and I certainly still keep up with some of your posting. So I'm aware of this horrible, horrible roller coaster ride that you and so many other parents go through. And in your particular case, I agree with you that you would need someone who could go through all your documents. They would have to read all your evidence, put together uh, a summary and an outline specific to the way law enforcement, the Attorney General, the FBI, the various groups that would be involved in a situation like this, they would have to put an outline specific to each of these groups because each of them have just, you know, a slightly different way of approaching a synopsis, a summary, uh, and so on. And then they would have to spend time with you, organizing you, and you, very similar to getting ready to prep for court testimony on what to say, how to say it, and in what order to say it, and when to present each of the pieces of evidence as you're having the conversation with the FBI or the Attorney General or the local police department, you probably would need to work with a criminal law attorney who specializes in 
you know, government corruption so they can bring in expertise to protect you. Uh, it's a little bit like a whistleblower, depending on the value of the evidence, the, the integrity of the evidence, uh, the amount of evidence. You can see that I returned the call immediately when you called and when I heard your story about your daughter you know, being life-threatening and so on. I'm just not in a position to provide the level of assistance they would need plus the expertise. I mean, you you almost need a small army of people I that was, could funnel through all this. The teachers, I was charged with, you know, attempted murder, a crime that never, ever occurred. The security cameras would have exonerated me. Right, I get the fact that eight months later, no, rarely does a business ever keep past even 30 days. A diligent investigation by an officer would have said, did this Ms. Cherry attack anybody else in the parking lot? Right, it was his duty to do a more thorough investigation. So the security footage was critical. There could have been other, you know, parties injured if their story would have been true. Also in that case, they subpoenaed every single document from Weld CPS who sent nothing. And they subpoenaed everything again, and they sent nothing again. It seems to me, first of all, that your story needs to be structured very differently. You have four or five different levels that you could approach your case. One is the child custody. And the child custody could be approached from the standpoint of you're concerned about your daughter's safety and eating properly and She's been in the hospital for a week, and then she got out. So I don't believe capable of supervising her new diet. She's got uh, acute pancreatitis. So she ate what she wasn't supposed to eat. She's been in there for two weeks, and it's not looking good. It could be life-threatening. It's come out of nowhere. If your daughters are saying they want to have contact with you and you have a document that says he gave you access to the children, do you have any rights to her medical records? Not that I'm aware of. Have your parental rights been severed? No. If your parental rights have not been severed, then you would have a right to those medical documents. I don't know how you perform in the courtroom, but it sounds like if you took the one case from a felony down to a misdemeanor, the two years probation, that's pretty outstanding. Except for when you look at the fact that what evidence did they have that even allowed it to get as far as two years probation. It seems like such a miscarriage of justice. I think you need to rethink how you're organizing your case. And then, if you want to go after the judges, that's one section. If you want to go after the law enforcement agencies, that's one section. The restraining order is one section. The medical is one section. You know, you could always try to overturn your case. And then when you break it down like that, and you do one section at a time, it becomes more feasible to address the issues with an appropriate agency specific to that issue. Like, for instance, when you're talking to the FBI, you would be talking about the 
law enforcement or the judges issue, and that might actually be something you want to talk to the Attorney General about as opposed to the FBI. Well, then it becomes more manageable for someone to come in. An attorney that you say, I want to talk to you about the FBI, the Attorney General, the judges, the sex trafficking, the law enforcement, the witness tampering, they're not even going to give you more than five minutes because the case will become so inordinately large that means it needs to be small needs to be tight conversation specific to that issue after you handle that one issue you go to a different attorney or that attorney says hey I agree with what happened to you here I'll take on another segment breaking it down makes it more manageable and in these family law cases, social services, criminal actions, law enforcement, restraining orders, domestic violence, child abuse, you overwhelm the person when you're giving the story. And so they're not going to give you any time. They're not going to do any work because they won't be able to take it on. I remember, I remember, I know that Jay hurt you. I know that. I remember that part. And then I think I threw something at him, and then you told me to get out of the room before he get hurt. I, I 